There's your little creepy uh, YouTube entrance. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something that's been gaining in popularity. Um, we've covered uh, some of this, but not the whole thing in entirety. And that's going to be like your, your, your bug out bags, your get home bag, just a regular preparedness bag for, you know, when stuff hits the fan, whether it's political, weather, like a tornado, hurricane, blizzard, things like that. It, it's a million things that could go wrong. Um, there's tons of videos on this. Um, we're not going to be doing a complete and utter total breakdown. Um, the reason I bring, I'm bringing it up is, yes, it's gaining in popularity. The problem, though, is a lot of people just don't know what to buy. They don't know where to start. They don't have the time to put into doing all the research and gathering all the pieces to these things. Uh, whether you're ordering emergency foods from Patriot Performance, uh, for Patriots, um, whatever company is out there. Um, I said Patriot Performance. Oh my God. It's, that's a training company. Um, I'm going to break out my handy dandy phone and give you some actual companies. Um, you can go to... Uh, Temu.com for prepper supplies for Patriots. Uh, that's the one I know uh, the best just because I have bought products off of them before. Uh, when it comes to like emergency food supplies, we've had those for years. And it's everything from the 25 year shelf life uh, emergency food that, you know, it's like a month worth of food for a person, which means you need to buy multiple sets for multiple people in your family. Uh, up to the uh, emergency like one month ration. It's like a C ration. It looks like a giant sugar cookie. Uh, it provides your 2,000 calories a day, thereabouts. It's not exactly the healthiest stuff for you. I'm sure it's wrecked with salts and sugars and all kinds of stuff like that. But listen, if we're all starving and you're dying, you're going to take what you can get. All right. Um, yeah, you can buy supplies off of Amazon. Uh, they have a survival prep store. I mean, just a real quick Google search or DuckDuckGo or Ask Jeeves, whatever the hell you're using these days. Uh, you can find a ton of stuff out there. That being said, not a lot of people have the time to, to put into cobbling together. That being said, not a lot of people have the time to kind of cobble together all the pieces that really need to go into these bags. Uh, and it's never going to be foolproof. You're always going to forget something. A lot of people just don't even know where to start. Uh, it's something that a lot of people have asked me about at work. And like, um, you know, where do we start? What do we put in it? What are we looking for? Um, neighbors have asked me because um, they feel ill-prepared. I think COVID back in 2020 really kind of shocked a lot of people into waking up to the fact that they're ill-prepared, they are not prepped. Uh, especially with the great toilet paper shortage, where nobody could get toilet paper. Like, what are we to do? I'm like, there's a lot of things you can do without toilet paper, right? You can use rags and wash them. Um, there's a million things you can do. Install a bidet, something. Um, but, that being said, again, not a lot of people have time to, to put forth the effort and, you know, what, what goes into it, right? Uh, like me, myself, obviously I've got some experience with this. Uh, I've done my research and I've, I've cobbled together. I gotta, I gotta grab it. My own bag, right? And you've seen this bag. Um, it's got everything in it that you're going to need and all that. Um, of course it's got uh, a breaching shotgun, which, you know, that's a, Good way to unlock things. No, I don't normally keep this on here. Uh, usually this is locked in a safe. Uh, but there's different things you're going to need to unlock gates and, and, and what open doors. Um, and it's everything from a lock pick set, because you want to be quiet, to what I call the universal key, which is basically a lock cutting um, for, for cutting locks. Uh, 
all kinds of different things like that. Sometimes there's no lock to cut, but you're still, you know, sitting there with an impossible um, entrance, as in the door is locked. So you're going to use something like this to breach. Um, you can't use buckshot. You can't use slugs. You have to use specialized rounds. You have to use breaching rounds. Now, a lot of places, especially here in Connecticut, they don't sell breaching rounds at your local gun store. So don't even go there looking for them, all right? And you've got to order them online. Breaching rounds are frangible. They are designed to break apart upon impact. If you use double up buck or use slugs, you got to understand that crap is going to be coming back at you. So if you don't have time to put together something like this or the expertise uh, with all the supplies, and this, this is designed for one person, so you need multiple bags if you have multiple people in your family. Um, not everybody needs a breaching shotgun, but all the supplies that are in this one bag, you're going to need, all right, per person. That includes water filters, the night vision, um, you know, simple things like headlamps, um, first aid kits, blowout kits, just regular boo-boo stuff, band-aids, all that good stuff. A lot of stuff goes into this, a lot of thinking and trial and error and, you know it, it takes a lot of time so let me put that down that is incredibly um heavy at times with the shotgun it is really heavy so that's another thing you know and you're gonna have a lot of weight on your back so it's not one of these things where you're just throwing on you know your little jam sport backpack and going off to to survive all right that being said, I am I understand bugging out. Uh, I am not a big fan of it uh, because whatever you take is what you need to survive. And if you have no game plan other than we leave, okay, um, it sucks outside. You're exposed to weather, uh, once if it's the winter. So you need to carry all the food you need with you, uh, your shelter, water purification stuff, all these things, right? Bugging out is like the last thing you want to do, especially if you already have a house. You might want to bug in because, well, you can have more stuff. Granted, you can't hold a house by yourself. You need community, which means you need friends and family to all migrate to one location where everybody chips in to protect the house. But that is a totally different video. Um, for us to bug out with my family, well, I still got my dogs to worry about. So the dogs even have little bug out bags. Um, but that's like the last thing we want to do. That's like a natural disaster is happening. Uh, otherwise, we want to stay, all right? And then we have our contingency plans, things like that. But you have to understand, once you leave your home, whatever you have in that backpack, that's what you've got, all right? Now, you might be able to throw more stuff into a vehicle, but if you're, you, you have a little car, um, you're not going to be able to pack that much stuff into it. Plus, then you have... A limited amount of fuel you're not going to get very far the vast majority of this is going to be walking and we're talking about you know end of world apocalypse civil unrest type stuff um because the vast majority of people get around the world by walking so you're carrying everything you need on your bag or in your bag on your back you're not going to get very far especially if you don't have the skills for bushcraft um for survival things like that even if you're knowledgeable, you don't know everything, all right? With a lot of pop culture media, um, it has been glamorized. Uh, and, and, and I'm looking for the right word here. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, I've been thinking about it a lot, too. Um, it's been romanticized um, about end of the world and... You know, you're out in the wilderness with all your stuff, surviving, you know, Walking Dead, Last of Us. Um, it's in popular culture with our games like The Division, things like that. Here's, a, here's the truth, guys. Because uh, the government did a study on this. Uh, something as simple as losing, say, the power grid. And that's all we lose. Everything else is okay, but we lose the power grid. It's something catastrophic where, like, it can't just be turned on in a day or two. Um... You know, 90% of the American population will die 
in the first six months. So if our power grid were to be attacked by an EMP or cyber warfare or anything to where it just shut down and we can't get it started, the vast majority of people, 90%, aren't going to make it. The first to go are people that need insulin or any other medication that needs to be refrigerated. They're done. Um, it's a scary thought. So if you look at the statistics, 10% survive, 90% die, more than likely you're not going to make it. All right. There's not even a chance that I'm going to make it with my family. Okay. Um, the, the odds are definitely against you. Now I'm not saying don't do anything, don't prep. There's a way to definitely uh, hedge your bets, right? Prepare as much as you can for almost every contingency you can. Uh, at the same time, you don't want to break the bank because, well, the economy is garbage, inflation is going through the roof, blah, 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 and you you can't get the same stuff you used to uh, with the same amount of money, right? But that's another story. Um, so, if you don't have the time to cobble together your own stuff uh, and, and piece it together, right? Because there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Um, some people might opt for a, a one-stop shop, right? Like all-in-one, buy this off the internet. About a week ago, on a, they got me, uh, on a magical Facebook ad, uh, I saw uh, a company offering these bags. So what did I do? Do I need it? No. But I still ordered one, so I could review it for you and take a look at it and show you what's in it. Uh, not sponsored by them. I bought this with my own money. All right, it wasn't that expensive. Um, the products that they had listed and they showed for the price point that it was wasn't actually that bad. It was reasonable. So I figured, why not? I'll get it. And uh, I haven't opened the box. For this whole video can be basically an unboxing. All right, so I'm going to adjust the camera so we can actually see the box and we're going to start opening it. All right, I hope the audio is not too bad with it not being directed right at me. So here's the box. All right, so let's open it. Let's take a look at what's in it. And of course, the link for this will be down um, in the description below. So if you're interested in it, well, there you go. All right, so opening the box. There you go. Uh, I opted for red. A lot of people are going to opt for black or the tan or multicam. I just opted for red. I figured this is something uh, I might just keep in my truck or maybe my wife's car, so on and so forth. All right, there is a receipt in here. I'm going to take that out. It's got my address and all that stuff on it. All right. So, here's the... All right. So, you're going to see this weird cut. Now we're here. It's actually a whole different day. The battery died in the camera. And I had to wait for it to charge. And I got busy with life. So, now we're here. A different day. So, let's take a look at the backpack itself. All right. So, obviously, we chose red. We covered that. Uh, got some buckles here, some molly and Velcro. As this is just a Velcro patch, which nobody cares about. Some more molly all around here. Uh, buckles to help cinch this up to make it tighter on the bottom. Also, and this could be a good storage area for sleeping bag or mat or other things. Moving on to the side, you have some more molly here. Uh, there's some molly up top, plus a good carry handle, a little looped nylon so you can attach more objects there. The straps do not go all the way up. Um, in fact, they are adjustable. Again, this is not supposed to be worn for like a day pack. Uh, it does have an opening here where you can insert, whether it be a plate a laptop, or other goodies that you want to put in there. Uh, 
this looks like material that is good for whisking away sweat. Um, it is aerated. You can see the foam inside. More molly. All right. The zippers look pretty robust. I have seen bigger and stronger in other packs, like the Mystery Ranch. But for the price, these are not the, the cheap little zippers you would get on your normal one of the middle back. So now we're going to take a look at each compartment. We're going to start here and then work our way in. As we find things, we'll pull them out and take a look at them. Unbuckle the Y strap. We're going to tuck this up out of the way. All right, first pouch is this one. It's empty. All right, so you have the top empty pouch. I don't know what you could put in here. Uh, maybe some tourniquets or band-aids or other odds and ends uh, gps unit headlamp worlds uh open to whatever you want to put in there right so whatever um now getting into this compartment this is in the way i mean you can just unzip it obviously but this so i can't pull it all the way open uh, I could probably just feed this back through here and uh, eliminate that. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if they just put it through there for, put it through here for uh, shipping purposes or what, but having it there permanently uh, kind of negates you getting into this pack or this this pouch right here so let's open this first pouch right here all right so what's in here it looks like it is going to be our emergency rations now there is two of these all right because this is a backpack set up for two people for 72 hours it's got slots in here for uh, pens or right in the rain, because if you don't have one of those, well, you, most definitely you're going to die. Um, these emergency rations, one brick per person. This is good for three days. Um, they do not last a very long time, as in it's not 25 years. Uh, it gives you instructions how to uh, eat one bar every six hours per person, and then eat in small pieces. Uh, it is... Vacuum sealed, but it is really rock hard, so you don't want to accidentally break a tooth. On the bottom here, uh, you're going to find the manufacture date, which is 5-23. And I'm sure if we open it up, there you go. So we know that it's good till 5-2028. So, though it's there, it's hidden, you might want to write a big 2028 20, on here. So you know that in 2028 it expires. Or you can just add um, it into your phone on an alarm. But there you go. Me personally, I usually just use a Sharpie and I just write the dates on here. So that's that pouch. <coughs> so empty, emergency food rations, area for pens, right in the rains, things of that nature. We're going to move into this big middle pouch now. So it is going to open up. All right, this looks to be all of our first aid and our boo-boo stuff. All right, it, it's all in these pl big plastic bags. Um, you can use it for organization, the big plastic bags. Uh, if you do pull everything out of these big bags, you are going to risk... Just having things floating all around inside of there. So I would suggest maybe leaving it all in here. But by all means, take a look at what's in here. Uh, you can always add to uh, deodorant. I don't know why you would need deodorant in the zombie apocalypse, but it's, uh, let's open it. Let's take a look what's inside here. Uh, if you hear barking, that's because Oreo is running around. All right, so we have a little travel first aid kit. Just Band-Aids, different sizes. Let me get it right in camera for you. Um, 
I would definitely add more to this. You can never have enough Band-Aids. Boo-boo kits are important. The all-important uh, KN95 COVID masks. Uh, the only reason I would keep these around, and it wouldn't be for COVID, it would probably be for, like, particulates in the air. So, you know, like a volcano. Or, God forbid, you're in Maui, and the whole damn island goes up in flames like it just did. You're going to have ash in the air. You're going to want to wear a mask. You don't want that stuff getting into your lungs. Little instructions for water purification tablets. Which is right here. So, for water purification. If you don't have um, a life straw or Sawyer filters with Sawyer bags, you're going to definitely need these. In my other backpack, I have water purification tablets along with life straws and the Sawyer bags and, and uh, filters. A toothbrush. There's only one. You might want to add another one, unless you're cool with sharing a toothbrush with your significant other or whoever. So that's the main bag. So the inner little bag is going to have oh, your secondary toothbrush. So that's good. There you go. It's going to have a safety razor. Uh, but as you know, I have a beard. I don't think I need to shave. But you never know, you might want to, you know, shave your legs or something. A uh, comb. So you can brush the, the grit out of your hair. Shaving cream. Deodorant soap. Another thing of shaving cream. little emergency toothpaste, little travel one. So if you don't want to use this and you want to add your own brand, that's fine. I would get little travel ones. Oh, of course, the little deodorant. Oh, as I drop it. Just add water. This is a cleansing towel, a little easy wipe. It's for it's one time use for cleaning up your face or whatnot. But if you're using this bag and you're you're bugging out of somewhere or trying to get home, uh, shampoo. Uh, some of this stuff you're really not going to need. So if you don't want any of this stuff, you can just take it out. Again, I would leave it in uh, because if you do have to walk away, this at least has all your essentials in it. So, I'm going to put all the toiletries together in this little bag. I'm going to roll out the air. Get a nice seal on it, which I just did off camera. So, it's nice and tight. And I'm going to put everything back in this big bag. Bye. Toiletries. The nice thing about having these bags... I mean, they're not the best, but at least it'll keep your stuff dry. So if you have this backpack and it starts raining out, all this stuff's going to be dry. Two uh, cootie masks, which everybody definitely has grown accustomed to in the past couple of years. And the first aid kit. So that's everything back in the bag. There you go. Move that off to the side. There's a second bag in here. Pull that out. What a bunch of stuff in here. Now, I know some people are going to be like, I don't like taking things out of the bags. I can never get it in right. I get that. I'm the same way. However, if you don't take this stuff out and look at it and touch it, um, it's not going to be ready. Some of this stuff can be removed from plastic out, right out the gate. So we got an emergency blanket, these little space blankets, um, 
These you can get almost anywhere. They are super cheap. All right, you, you can use these not only on yourself, but if you build a fire, you can use this to help reflect the heat back towards you. So having more than just one per person is probably going to help you out a lot better. You have a portable radio. Got a little USB charger in it. Instructions in the box. Solar powered. Little antenna. Going the wrong way. Little antenna. Having an emergency radio is always really good flashlight and it's one of those that you can crank a charge to it is not the best but it's better than nothing this is probably already dead oh. five to ten knots seas one foot or less slight chance of showers and thunderstorms late for tonight south winds so it does have a charge. That was set for NOAA. Uh, there is some plastic protection on there, so on and so forth. Instead of me putting this back in the box and everything, I am just going to throw this away and keep that on its own. All right. We have safety goggles. These are better than nothing, I guess, but if you have sunglasses, uh, you can throw a spare pair of sunglasses in here or regular safety glasses. These are the uh, the old school, like, chemical goggles. Um, they're, they're better than nothing. I wouldn't rely on these. I uh, definitely have my own. Some emergency ponchos. These are always good to have because if it starts raining, the last thing you want to do is get wet and have all your stuff get wet. So having emergency ponchos, which you can just use garbage bags, but these are good. Uh, we do have a ton of these laying about the house and in the cars just because they are super cheap. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. They are not designed to last forever. So we just pick these up every now and then make sure we have a bunch in stock. And then we have Uniheat multifunction warmers. So if you're outdoors, sore muscles, what help keep you warm. We actually uh, have a giant box full of these, uh, like pocket warmers. And we get them at uh, for us a store called uh, Ocean State Job Lot. And they have stuff like this, and it's relatively cheap. It's like all overstock stuff. So if you have an Ollie's or something similar, then when you're there and they have them in stock, pick a few of them up. All right? Put the radio in here. Put that in there. Or goofy little safety glasses. And of course, our space blankets. And that's all for that pouch. So we're just going to drop these back in. And it has these two little webbing areas for extra storage. This, so if you wanted to take some of the stuff out of here and put like your radio in here, what? whatever that's fine me right now I'm just gonna keep everything in these little plastic bags I can just go right back in there so again if you don't have time to do your own thing this at least is a good start let's move on to the main pouch all right so
So in the main pouch, as soon as you open it, let me turn it so you get a better angle, you can see there is uh, this little pouch right in here. So it's empty, but you can add things to it. One important thing that's in here are these little emergency drinking waters. All right, so one bag per person. There's two, two bags of these in here. If you live anywhere where it gets cold in the winter and things freeze, I don't suggest leaving this in your car. You don't want these freezing and then exploding all over the inside of your car. But just little emergency waters. They're not bad. It gives you directions how to drink it. If you don't know how to drink water, you got bigger issues. So here's another bag, emergency waters. Again, it's set up for two people. All right, now we have this bag. So let's push this out of the way. Opening this one up, you have your emergency shelter, which I don't know if two people will fit in there. It's something, it's basically just an extra large space blanket. Okay, I, I know the light is glaring on it. There we go. You've got a pair of work gloves. Uh, these are like cheap gardening gloves, cheap construction gloves uh, that you can get anywhere. Um, they are not going to fit everybody. These look like they'd be too big for me. Um, I would suggest putting in a spare pair of gloves, mechanics, or outdoor uh, research. One of the other brands, a little glow stick. You never have enough of these. You can buy a bunch of these on Amazon. I'll put uh, what I buy in the description below. You can get a ton of these. They're great for everything, um, especially if you lose power. We've used these before to illuminate like steps and stuff so we can see where we're going, uh, especially like going downstairs to our basement. It has a survival paracord. All right. So I know this inside is like a little ferro rod. Uh, it's got a whistle on it. And we'll pull this apart in a sec. Empty. We'll that to the side. So you've got this hard case, which I know they sell just this on Amazon. We'll open this up. Let's open this up. You want to have all this stuff opened up, mess around with it, play with it. Last thing you need is to use some of this stuff in an emergency, and it's all wrapped in plastic. Right? We have a lot of people that show up for classes, and they've got their brand new blowout kits, their IFACs, all that stuff, and all the tourniquets are wrapped in plastic. You've, you've got to open that stuff up. If you don't open it up when you need it, now you have an extra layer of crap to get through. All right? So it talks about... Got 550 cord, uh, whistle on the buckle, flint fire starter scraper, and super strong cord, which is the 550 cord. So I actually have one of these uh, floating in the truck in the center console. So it's got a little ferro rod, the scraper, so you can scrape to start a fire. It's something, a whistle. Good in a pinch, but if you prep and you have things already ready, you shouldn't be using anything like this. This is for like all else fails, all right? Because that ferro rod is really small and can be a little frustrating. I know I've tr I've tried to use it, my other one before, and it is a pain. So let's open this hard plastic case. All right, so it's branded. Actually, I have a bunch of cases like this. Let's 
struggling to open it. I have no nails. And no, I don't chew them. I just cut them short. All right. So this looks to be on the outside, maybe water resistant. I doubt it's waterproof. Uh, it does have an O-ring. So I would call it water resistant. But see how everything in here is wrapped in plastic? You want all this stuff unwrapped, all right? So let's go through it real quick. I know the sunlight and everything's killing you. I'll, I'll do my best. All right, so it comes with a larger ferro rod. They've got a larger ferro rod scraper okay uh, that's the scraper part I, I watched one video where the guy was trying to use this part uh, that that is a bottle opener um, I doubt you can use it as a can opener but it'll you can do whatever you're supposed to drag it across like this uh, it does have a little measuring tool you could probably scrape this way too just like this uh, it's gonna help to maybe remove the cord because the cord as you go might get in your way unless you hold it back like this but then you're kind of limiting practice with this stuff all right practice if you don't practice with it then when you need to use it you're going to struggle and that's the last time you want to be struggling Uh, looks like it has a little flashlight. <coughs> no, no batteries. <clears throat> so you just have to add a battery. Let's take a look at what it runs on. Hopefully it runs on a common battery like a 123 or something. This is just aluminum housing. So. Oh, there you go. Telescoping. There's better flashlights out there. I mean, this is good in a pinch, but... I'd rather have a Surefire or something else, but better than nothing, if you're just getting started. The all-important compass. Um, this, well, I would not want to use this to do land nav. I have a lens, uh, lensetic compass that I would use. And let's see if this is even right. All right. So it's telling me north is that way. Kind of. Let's see how it uh, compares with my digital one. Sorry, I know it's quiet. I'm just trying to get it to go. Because I know that way is north. And it's not exactly on. I don't think there's any metal interference. I wouldn't trust this. That's just me. I don't even trust this. That's why I use multiple compasses. Um. I do have a really nice expensive compass uh, that's in the other backpack. Uh, a whistle. All 
All right, so if you're lost or whatever, you can whistle. Um, it's not bad. It, it's good for what it is. You want a really good whistle? You go to your local sports store and you get yourself a fox whistle. It's what like uh, coaches and umpires use. The harder you blow into it, the louder it is. I've had one for decades ever since my lifeguarding days. Always had one. And that's what I've incorporated into my other pack. This is okay. Not the best. But we got to look at what I paid for it. So this looks to be like a little finger light. If you don't know what a finger light is, no, it's not a finger light. But it is a little... Just a little light. Um, finger light. Um, in the military, it's just a little piece of fabric. And it's got like a little red light on it. So you're able to put it on your fingertip. So when you're reading maps or doing whatever, you can utilize something like that. Um, this is okay. It's better than nothing. I would not use this to find my way around at night. But if you drop something and you're looking for it, maybe. You get a cool tactical pen. Uh, it does have a punch in the back for maybe popping windows. It is twist. It does have that little plastic on the tip. It's better than nothing. I use white uh, right in the rain because uh, those pens are pressurized and I have pencils because well the right in the rain notebooks when they're wet the only thing that really works on them is a pencil and then there's this little card which looks to be their multi-tool so it's a multi-tool card um, for nuts, a little saw, a little scraper for measuring. It's made out of stainless steel. Shouldn't rust. And then a little card that explains everything that's in there. Can opener, knife edge, screwdriver, ruler, can opener, four position wrench, butterfly wrench, a saw blade. Um. direction ancillary indicator, a two position wrench and the lanyard hole so you don't lose it. You can use this. Me, I'd rather just have a regular multi-tool. Go buy yourself a Leatherman. I've got several. Every vehicle's got one. I have a Leatherman Mutt that's on my kit that's specifically designed for the AR-15 platform. All right. That'll need batteries. Now, if you do put batteries in these things, remember, batteries go bad. And if you just leave them and forget them, they're going to leak everywhere. You don't want that. It'll corrode. So, if you're going to put batteries in this stuff, make sure you check it annually. Make sure you're not getting battery acid leaking everywhere. It's okay for what it is. Um, I personally would probably swap a bunch of this stuff out. But, hey, again, if you're just starting, this is better than nothing. All right. Now we're going to put it all back in the bag that it came in. Big space blanket, your your emergency shelter. Right. You have your glow stick. And then this.
do my best to squeeze all the air out. All right, I don't want this filled with air. Uh, obviously, it, it would take up more space if it was. So, put this back in. First thing of emergency water. Which, if I was going to carry this, I don't want this on my back and sloshing around. So, for right now, it's okay. And that is it for the uh, two person. 72 hour emergency pack from Stealth Angel. So, as you can see, it is a different day. Uh, yesterday I was wearing a Glock polo. Today I am wearing a wonderful t shirt from The Raven in Virginia Beach. Uh, for you, those that, that have been down there, Virginia Beach, you know the area, this was a staple. It is no longer there. It closed down, COVID, and all that. But this. This was some good food, all right? Um, I hope you enjoyed the video of the Stealth Angel backpack. For 120 bucks, it's not bad. I mean, if you try and piece it all together yourself, you might end up spending more, but then you can choose better stuff. So instead of that little credit card tool, you could actually get a regular Leatherman or something. Uh, you're gonna spend more. I mean, my Leatherman, my cost more this than this entire backpack with everything in it combined right it's a mutt is expensive so if you don't have a lot of money or you're just trying to start off and not spend a lot the backpack probably going to be your best option hope you guys enjoyed the video the best way to support the channel is obviously to buy the merch we got hats we got shirts we got a bunch of other stuff available it's all down in the description below please hit the like share Throw stuff down in the comments. Um, I'm always in the comments. Mess around. 